How you doing? We're back again, and then again, as you can see, we have a symbol in the corner saying that we're going to do a bit more on our blaster. So today we're going to talk about how we're going to weather it. Now there is many different ways that you can weather something up. Um, people have to do dry brushing or putting on paint and then wiping it off with windowly and things like that. There's many, many different types of, of methods out there, and you really got to pick which one suits you. Uh, for this one, I'm going to do two different methods. Um, one is I am going to touch it up in areas that I think would wear down or get scraped um, with a silver marker. This is a permanent silver marker. Now you can use silver paint if you want to as well, but I'm just doing this um, as cheaply as I can, so that's why I'm using this. I'm also going to be using um, some weathering paints from um, a modeling kit that you can buy at most hobby shops. Um, tell me how there are different types of weathering kits for different type of kit models. So um, I'm going to put some of this on it as well to make it a bit more dirty and uh, to dirty it up. So this is kind of a dry brushing kit um, already made out. Okay, so let's bring you in and uh, let's start weathering. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a brush and we're going to take our silver pen and put some ink onto it and we're going to gently dry brush some scrapes. See that now? There you go. She looks like she's been scraped up a bit. Now, I want to get some uh, real nice highlighting brushes. Just on the design here. Not too much. Maybe a uh, Light finish off it. Now we're going to put this to one side and we'll get on to the main part of the gun. Right, so now we're going to do a bit just up here now on the front of the gun. Putting some silver on our brush. We just want to touch up very gently around the edges and make sure you don't have a direct line that's a little bit broken.
it's all weathered up. Basically I just wanted it to look like she'd been used. I don't want it to be too dirty because I don't think clone troopers would have their guns totally dirtied up because I'm sure they would keep them clean being good troopers. So I just wanted to have some wear and tear on the actual rifle. And basically it's the same then on the other side as well. So now we have most of the painting done. Um, I just wanted to do it lightly, so but now I'm just going to put some slightly bit of weathering on certain parts that might be getting dirty. So as I said, this is the Weathering Master kit. Um, it's got different colours. It's got sand, light sand, and mud. So I'm just going to put some mud. And basically, what you do is you got a, a brush and a sponge, either end. So you just wet one end of it. And then I'm going to do it in these ports here because I want to have it look like a little bit dirtied up. Dirt's getting in here. Take my brush. Brush it down a bit. There we go. Don't want to do too much. But I do want it to look like I've been on a bit of a dusty planet. one of my youtubers that I was going to do something special with the scope and what that is I'm actually going to put in lenses on the inside and make it into a proper scope it's actually quite well made um, on this side there is a rim on the inside that you could actually pop something onto there's also rims on both ends where you can also put other pieces so the first bit I'm going to make is the one for this side and I have the top off a medicine bottle which is just about the right size I believe to make a perfect lens and what I'm going to use is um, we can buy these type of um, clear mats they actually come in different colors as well um, they use them for school kids to put between their pages of their copy books when they're writing um, and so you have these lovely Mats is a book B51, um, and basically they're like a clear perspex, which is quite nice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle permanent marker. Here, I'm just going to cut it out. There's my circle, and I'm going to now try and pop this inside. I can, it's going to be too big, might be a little bit too big, so I'm actually going to take a little bit off the edge. She's in. 
popped in there and she's not going to come out. It'll be really nice. Now, the second one I want to make now is just going to go on the inside. Um, there's another rim. I don't know if you can see that. Or not. There's a rim on the inside, which I want to pop the one onto. Yeah, that one might have to push down a bit more. So I'm just going to make another one, and then I'm going to slowly cut it down. do is draw my scope hairs on this that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to use Right, so I got her in. I've uh, used some blue tack or yellow tack, whatever you want to call it, just to push it in to hold it into place. Um, you could glue it in, I suppose, but if you put super glue in small places, it tends to make a filament and turn things white. So I have um, not done that. So I just want to show you what this looks like. I'll take her over here, and uh, I don't know if you can see on that. There you go. That's my scope. Now, unfortunately, I did scratch it a little bit getting it in, but I think that's pretty cool. So now I just need to make one more lens to go on this side. Right, there you have it. Um, I've put the lenses in and I put in the sculpt piece on the inside so I'll paint up silver and dirt it up where she's supposed to be right. her in. there she is fully operational once again thank you very much for watching and may the force be with you